over the course of the next six to 12 months, I can see him getting it down to somewhere in the 130 range, whether it's 130s, 135s, um, that is certainly possible. And coming from a running background, um, that's, that's really impressive. We recently had a guest on the podcast, Stephen Jackson. Stephen attended a clinic of ours about two and a half years ago. And since then he's been a member where he's been sending his videos quite regularly to work on his technique. And we had him on the podcast where he spoke about, he was able to go 220, two and a half years ago, 220 pace for his Ironman swims. And he's now down to the mid 140s, which is a, a really good improvement, an improvement of about 35 seconds per 100 over the course of a, a roughly a half Ironman swim. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that Steven's improved over that time, and I'll talk about how he went about improving those things. So the before shot, this is from two and a half years ago, mid 2017. You'll see here that body position, the hips and the legs were dropping quite a bit. So in terms of swimming fast, it's very, very hard to swim with any sort of speed if the hips and the legs are dropping down that low. There's a number of things that was causing that to happen. So one of them was head position, you'll see that where he was looking there, just a little bit far forwards at times. Uh, so where he's looking there, he could look a little bit further down. It wasn't the main cause of it, not at all, but the head position was just uh, the chin a little far forwards. The other thing that was causing it was the kick. There wasn't much of an upwards kick at all. So if you see the, the kick here, we get this upwards kick, but it doesn't really come above the line of the hip. So even though he's, he's kicking upwards here, that thigh, that quad is still lower than the hip. And so what we wanna try and do there is on some of those upwards kicks, just get the, the legs coming up a little bit higher. So that was, that was one of the things that was causing it. So just a little bit, um, little bit low with the kick. So he wasn't lifting up enough from the glutes and from the hips. He was also exiting the water really short. So where this hand comes out, you'll notice that first of all, the hand turns into the body. So the palm of the hand's facing in towards his hip right there so quite early on and then the hand exits at the hip where we want to be is here where my mouse is a little bit further past it so in order to uh to really get an extra 10 15 percent out of each stroke that's one of the things that we had to to work on is finishing further back past the hip and keeping the palm of the hand facing back for longer the other thing you'll notice as we go through here is the catch there wasn't much of a catch happening and part of that was the, uh, the alignment. So when the hand was coming in, all right, fingers first, which is good. Then as he was going through that first position, you'll see that the fingertips are above the elbow. So we're sort of dropping the elbow very early on. And from there, the hand just kept pressing down and we get to this dropped elbow catch position. So there wasn't much of a catch happening. And same on this right hand side, this right arm is crossing over, which I'll show, show you in a moment. Fingers were coming up and that elbow was dropping. This is a really common thing for people who are sort of slower than the two minutes per 100 mark. So one of the things that can be worth checking if, if that is you, is when you enter, is your hand sliding forwards and are the fingers getting deeper than the rest of the arm, just slightly deeper. And from there, you can just see that the hand was mostly pressing down. Fingers are facing forwards, pressing down to help him get the breath. And so he just wasn't getting that much propulsion out of it. What we did work on there, one of the things we worked on there is obviously changing it so that the fingers are deeper than the the wrist, wrist below the elbow, and exiting further past the hip because it's those two things that work together. Pressing back further past the hip, getting to about here, and also getting this, this reach out in front where the hand's in the right position, the arm's in the right position. That's where you get this nice distance per stroke. You get a little bit of extra, extra glide, extra distance, and that can really just help make things feel so much easier make you feel like you're going from swimming on a treadmill that you can't get off to skating from your left side to your right side. It can really make a difference there. And I'll show you the front view because this is quite, uh, quite good to see. You get the left hand crossing over a lot and we'll bring it up a little bit further as well. So that left hand was really crossing the center and it was sort of shifting the head off to the side when he was breathing as well. And that's where we get the shoulders rotating a long way, all the way to 90 degrees, which is too far. We wanna keep that to about 45 degrees. And you can see what happened with the catch there. Arm is very straight, um, shoulders quite low, and so just not able to get a whole lot out of it. And on that right-hand side, the, the arm's crossing well past the center, 
uh, and then it had to sort of make its way back out. So there's some of the sort of flaws or the faults in the stroke that we've worked on over the last two, two and a half years. So let's have a look at uh, where it is today. So in terms of that alignment, that right side is good. It's entering in line with the shoulder, extending forwards. And the, the thing that's much more noticeable here is great. I'm so much better here where the fingertips are below the wrist, wrist below the elbow, whereas before those fingertips were up too high. On the left-hand side, that one crosses over a bit. So there's still a bit of crossover on some of these strokes. Uh, I'll bring it back here. So we can still go a little bit wider, but as we come forwards, you'll see that the fingertips stay lower than the wrist and the elbow. So that's so much better than having those fingers rise up and putting the brakes on. The other thing you'll notice here too is much better angle with the catch. So before that arm was going down straight and deep, now we're starting to get a bit of bend in the elbow, it's starting to get some of that power diamond, which we want to see. And, uh, and the catch is improving a lot. So we can still shift that out. And that's what we, I talk about in uh, his, his latest analysis, but so much better. And same here, so much better with this angle, getting towards that power diamond. You know, when we look at this at angle at the elbow, it should be 100 to 120 degrees. And, uh, and we're getting very close to that. I think it's around about 130 there. So from the front looking much better. And from the side, you'll notice what a difference this is too. So in terms of that body position, much higher, much less drag being created there. And you'll see that the heels are actually breaking the surface now. So comparing this position to this position, you can see what a noticeable difference that is. And it's a combination of all of those different things that we ended up working on. And I'll play it through here. Combination of each of those things, but you will see that uh, that what he does well here, and I'll get it the closer angle because this is probably easier to see, is that, all right, what happens out in front is a, is a lot better here. So on that breathing stroke, yeah, the hand comes up a little bit there, but pretty quickly we get it to a much better position where the fingers are below the wrist, wrist below the elbow. And now we've got a bit of a catch on this arm. That elbow's not dropping like it was. Left one there, good getting the fingertips to point down quite a bit more. And now it looks here like he's sort of dropped the elbow a bit. Not necessarily the case because that left arm's coming under the body a little bit too much. So once he shifts that out, it'll start to move into sort of a straight arm catch and, and eventually a higher elbow position. Um, so even though it does look dropped, it's not dropped per se, it's just more because that, uh, that arm's come under the body. But here you can see what a better catch he gets on this right hand side on that stroke there. Fingertips are pointing down, whereas before they were really facing forwards most of the time. And moving through there and exiting. Still exiting probably a little bit short on that stroke. He's keeping the hand facing back behind him a little bit longer, um, but he could go slightly further back there. And we talk about some of these things in the most recent analysis. That exit's pretty close. And as you know, swimming is a process. So what, we, you know, what we've worked on over the last two and a half years is each of these things and you're not going to get all of these things right straight away um, and sometimes some things will work well and then other things will start to sort of fall apart there um, and we just want to sort of revisit them and that's what we've found over those two and a half years as I've worked with Stephen is that you know we, we'll look at uh, look at say the catch and the pool we'll, we'll practice a few different things with that and uh, and then we might find that you know maybe the the, the kick started to change and so we just start to you know refine them over that course of time the other thing that, that I think has made a big difference is the patience in the catch. So you'll see in this very first view, this before one, he's really rushing out in front. There's a lot of bubbles on the hand. He's looking to start the catch and the pull as quickly as he possibly can. Whereas what we've, we've worked on here is just being more patient. So slow to fast. You want the hands out in front to be that little bit slower than it is out the back. And so with that sort of patience with the catch, it just gives you the time to be able to uh, to connect everything up in the body. Plus it can really bring the heart rate down. And you notice that with his breathing too, it's very beforehand. It was very um, rushed with the breath, whereas now he's able to control that breath a whole lot more. And that's a big factor to swimming 220s compared to one, 145s there. So uh, in terms of, all right, well, these are the things that we've changed. What are some of the drills that we used to, to change some of these things? So um, one of them was the tricep extension drill to help with pressing back and keeping the palm of the hand facing back for longer. So tricep extension drill, which you can see here, this is uh, the drill that I like to use 
most of the time to help with the exit of the stroke. With the um, with improving the body position, one of the things that um, that we have done is just work on either your front kicking drill or your body position kick drill, where you're looking to just exaggerate or you know, sort of just get be able to kick at the surface of the water and also just keeping the kick a little bit smoother and a little bit smaller as well. So body position kick or front kick drill can be really good for, for working on that. The, uh, the other thing we worked on was on those breathing strokes, which you can see from the front, we don't want to over rotate. So we want to try and just make sure that the shoulders are rotating to about sort of uh, 45, maximum really 50 degrees on those breathing strokes. Uh, so one of the things that we practiced there was uh, the FKB drill, which you've probably seen in some previous videos. The last one, we've done a lot of different catch drills over that two and a half years, um, but now we're just really working on the YMCA drills in order to uh, continue to refine the catch in the pool. And on a lot of strokes, he really gets a, gets a good catch on the, uh, on both sides, but particularly the right one. You can see how much better, like this position here, that shoulder is up near the side of the face. Great position to start the catch. You can see what's happening there is actually getting that high elbow position, which is a big, big difference. So we're using the YMCA drill progression to, to help with that now and just continue to refine the other parts of the stroke. So uh, made a big, big difference here. And, uh, and as you can see, there's still things that we can do. And over the course of the next six to 12 months, I can see him getting it down to somewhere in the 130 range, whether it's 130s, 135s, um, that is certainly possible. And coming from a running background, um, that's, that's really impressive as well. So uh, if you haven't heard the podcast, you can find our podcast on uh, by searching the Effortless Swimming podcast and, uh, and find Stephen's episode there. And we also do uh, podcasts every single week. So thanks very much for watching and I hope you learned something from this video. Now, if you do want to work with me on your own stroke to in improve your swimming, whether it's open water, whether it's for the pool or in triathlon, then you can join our stroke analysis membership. We're currently open to new members. Find the link below in the description and looking forward to working with you. I'll see you next week.